Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Catherine Carroll. I'm a um, senior registered dietitian at Our Ladies Children's Hospital, Crumlin, uh, Dublin, Ireland, and uh, that's where the National Pediatric Haematology and Alconogy Unit is Unit is centred. I'd like to thank the organisers for, uh, for giving me the opportunity to present today on an overview of nutrition support in a paediatric stem cell unit. Again, I'd like to start off, not, unfortunately, nothing to disclose. So uh, the conditioning regimens used in stem cell transplant cause a multitude of um, side effects, and many of these side effects will impact greatly on a patient's nutritional status as they cause reduced oral intake, uh, potentially increased catabolism and or increased losses. Therefore, nutrition support is a key component in the overall supportive care management um, of these side effects in this clinical setting, with the aim being to minimize the risk of or prevent the development of malnutrition and the adverse patient um, outcomes associated with this. However, there is little published data on uh, nutrition support practices for this cohort um, and also a lack of consensus of the optimum timing or mode of nutrition support and target nutritional intakes to be achieved by nutrition support. Therefore, the aim of our study was to analyze the use of nutrition support in a pediatric stem cell transplant unit with respect to the following. Um, the modes of nutrition support utilized, um, the ability of nutrition support to meet estimated nutritional requirements, and to assess the effectiveness of nutrition support by tracking changes in anthropometric measurements as proxy measures of nutritional status. So we conducted a retrospective review of all pediatric patients who received a stem cell transplant within our unit from the 1st of June 2014 to the 31st of December 2016. Inclusion criteria were um, those patients who received a single allogeneic or autologous transplant, of which there were 50 within this time period. Protein and energy intakes from enteral and parenteral nutrition were calculated daily for the patient's length of stay. Um, we were unable to include uh, nutritional intake from oral diet or oral nutritional um, supplements as these were not recorded in a consistent manner. Weight and height measurements were taken on admission and at discharge, and from these, percentage weight change and World Health Organization beam, um, body mass index scores were calculated. So this is just a summary table of our patient demographics. So median age at admission was five years, ranged from two months to 17 years. 70% uh, of um, the cohort had a hematological diagnosis, um, therefore 70% of the transplants were allogeneic, the remaining 30 um, being autologous. 90% of the children had um, chemotherapy-only conditioning, um, with median duration of conditioning being 8 days, and median length of stay was 37 days. So this graph provides a breakdown of um, our nutrition support use uh, prior to um, during and post-discharge from a stem cell transplant um, in our unit. The coloured bars represent um, its usage expressed as percentage of um, all patients who received oh, Janie, uh, nutrition support. Um, in the blue, uh, the red bar are allogeneic patients and in the green, autologous patients. In total, 92% of our cohort received nutrition support during their transplant admission. So our unit would aim to optimize a patient's nutritional status prior to transplant, and this is reflected in the numbers of children admitted to the unit already established on nutrition support, as shown in the first set of bars at 33%. The next three bars specifically relate to nutrition support used during the transplant admission itself. So 59% had enteral nutrition, um, third column, 33% uh, had combined nutrition support. Uh, the fourth set of bars show that only 8% had parenteral nutrition, of which all the patients had an allogeneic transplant. Other studies have published um, rates of enteral nutrition rate at 54 to 56%, which would be similar to what we have here, but their parenteral nutrition rate um, use was higher at 19 to 22%. Lastly, 54% of the children were discharged home still requiring enteral nutrition, with median duration of enteral nutrition use post-discharge being 91 days. So our next objective uh, was to assess the adequacy of nutrition support to meet estimated nutritional requirements. 
So protein and energy intakes, as I said, were calculated from enteral and parenteral nutrition, and then expressed as a percentage of uh, protein and energy um, requirements. Values were then pooled together to present weekly values for each mode of nutrition support used, so the enteral nutrition combined and parenteral nutrition. Calculations started on day zero, and week one is day zero up to day plus six, week two, uh, day plus seven, and so on. Um, I know it's a busy slide, but if I just draw attention to the last row there, the, um, which contains the summary of the values. So uh, regardless of the nutrition support received, the patients were generally meeting the protein requirements. Percentage energy requirements ranged from 51% for enteral nutrition, 65% for combined nutrition support, and 52% for parenteral nutrition. Um, a couple of studies in 2012 uh, reported intakes of 51% from enteral nutrition, which would be comparable to ourselves, um, and a second study, 32 to 42% of energy requirements meeting energy, um, energy intakes meeting energy requirements. And now to our last outcome measure, um, to assess the effectiveness of nutrition support by tracking changes in nutritional status using presented weight change and BMI Z scores markers. So uh, first of all, we compare changes by transplant type, and we can see in the first line there, um, those children that received an allogeneic transplant had actually smaller changes compared to the autologous transplant patients, but these um, differences were not statistically significant. Um, results um, were also similar for the children who received no nutrition support versus those that did. And lastly, when we broke it down by the three modes of nutrition support utilized, um, we see the values are once again very similar. Um, Arzanus et al. in 2012 had presented weight changes of minus 1 to minus 4% and change in BMI Z score of approximately minus 0 0.5. So um, again, our results would be similar to that. So to conclude, uh, nutrition support use in this un uh, is widely used in this unit from optimizing nutrition status prior to admission to um, going home in a post-transplant. Um, post Enteral nutrition was received by 91% of the cohort, and this is very much in keeping with our, um, uh, uh, that enteral nutrition is our preferred standard of care. Percentage energy intakes um, from nutrition support in this audit were similar to other published data. However, I do believe further research into um, how best to estimate nutritional requirements is needed so as to more accurately identify optimal protein and energy intakes to preserve uh, lean body mass and body fat um, stores for patients in this setting. Uh, we propose that the nutrition support uh, received by this cohort was effective in maintaining nutritional status as seen in the minimal changes um, in anthropometry. However, we do acknowledge the limitations in the measures we chose and therefore um, going forward we'd recommend the inclusion of other measures, mid-arm upper circumference, skin fold thickness, BIA, etc. for more comprehensive assessment of nutritional status. Lastly, we hope our findings will contribute to the development of evidence-based guidelines on the provision of nutrition support for pediatric patients undergoing stem cell transplantation. Thank you.